Hi friends, I'm excited to announce a brand new version of Excalibur today, V0.29. We're in striking distance of V1, and we have a ton of stuff to talk about today. We have a lot of cool new features, a lot of stuff the community has made, and a little sneak peek into our roadmap towards V1. So let's get into it. This is a jam-packed release. We have a lot of cool stuff, including an ECS refactor, a brand new DevTools plugin in Chrome. What? Uh, graphics refactor, a bunch of new things for scenes, new customizable loaders, graphics improvements, including specific settings for pixel art, and many more. I'm not covering everything that's released in this video. Uh, go check out the change log up on the GitHub release for the very large change notes. Um, there's a ton of stuff here if you want to get into the weeds and read about the details. So hopping right in for the uninitiated, Entity Component System is basically an entity that holds onto components, and components have data, and systems implement the behavior. To define a new component, it's actually as simple as extending the Excalibur component type and then putting whatever you want in there. Adding your own system is pretty similar. All you need to do is extend system, add your system type to either be update or draw, and then once you have that, you can use the world to grab a query for all of the entities that match your specific component. And then you can loop through them and do something with those. Adding a system to the current scene isn't too difficult. Just pass the system constructor to the current scene.world, create your actor or entity, and add that component, and you're off to the races. We have a brand new DevTools plugin now available on the Chrome Web Store. This is super useful for debugging your games and finding performance problems. Here's an example of us running the dev tools on a live game. Uh, as you can see here, we have the inspector panel where you can see all kinds of things about entities. You can remove entities. You can see the current scenes. You can also trigger the test clock, which will go frame by frame. In the performance tab, you can see your FPS and your frame budget. So you can see what things are taking a long time or what aspects of your game are taking a long time. You can also toggle the debug draw settings and turn on as many things as you want. So you could just light up all of the things here and then you can also change their colors. So if there's a color that isn't suited to you, you can go ahead and change that out. The DevTools extension is of course open source. And if you'd like to get started in open source, we have a huge laundry list of features that we want. So go ahead and open a PR uh, and that would be a huge help. One really cool new feature is the ability to have scene-specific input handlers. So on the left, you can see that you needed to keep track of your uh, subscriptions so that you could clean them up later so they didn't fire in other scenes uh, since they were attached to the engine. And the right, you can just attach them to the scene input and they will only fire when the scene is active. Another really cool new feature to scenes is the new scene transition API where you can smoothly transition between two different scenes. We have the fade in and out where you can pick a color to fade in and out of. And we also have a crossfade transition that you can crossfade between two different scenes. It's pretty easy to define a transition. Just add it to your scenes uh, collection in your engine constructor. New to scenes is the ability to define per scene loaders. So you can see here when I transitioned between one scene and the other, the loader was popped, but it will only load those resources the once. So the second time I come in here, it doesn't need to load it anymore. To handle this, there is a new lifecycle hook on scenes called on preload that you can extend and add any resources you want. And in here, I'm adding the on activate for music.play and music.stop. The cool new features for scenes don't end there. We have a brand new way to customize your loaders. So in this example, I wanted a violet loader that went from zero to 100. So in order to do a custom loader, you throw it on your scene collection here as a custom loader here. And to get a custom loader, you extend the Excalibur default loader. And then that comes with a few lifecycle hooks. Uh, on before load is before anything loads at all. On after load is after everything is loaded. On user action is when you need a user gesture to do something. For example, unlock the audio context. Uh, and then on draw, obviously draws the loader to the screen. We have a new pixel art preset called pixel art equals true that you can pass to the engine constructor. And you're seeing that on the right. 
and it removes all of the artifacts that you see on the left where you get kind of this shimmer effect. It's a huge win for pixel art. One of the biggest new features is a new resource type called font source that was implemented by Matt Jennings. This is super awesome. It will guarantee that a web font is available for you when you need it. Huge thanks to Matt Jennings. He's been a total MVP and hanging out with me late nights on Discord, uh, helping me solve problems. Uh, this is super awesome. A community member has built a new officially blessed CLI to generate projects in Excalibur. It uses all the templates from our GitHub and Manu has done a fantastic job building this because uh, now you can get started building games right away with all, all of the boilerplate hassle. Pretty cool. Next up, we spent a lot of time updating our integrations. We have a new LDTK level editor plugin. We have a new Sprite Fusion plugin and a brand new rewritten from the ground up tiled plugin, uh, which is a super mature plugin. Uh, and all of these will help you make levels super quick and super easy. Let's dive into them. First up is the LDTK plugin, uh, which is a super great editor. Uh, I really recommend you try this out in your next game jam. The user experience is super slick, super useful for level to design. You can do multiple levels here in one kind of fluid screen. Uh, and here, uh, Excalibur uses the different types of layers, like the integer layer for doing solid walls. So that's that gray wall you see there. And then you can use objects for objects in the game. Uh, you can go ahead and move them around like a, a you see here, and you can see that the player moves around pretty slick stuff. Now we can see how the plugin works in the code. You'll notice that all you need to do is add a factory for the entities that you want to generate and then add it to the scene. Uh, the resource itself just points right at the LDTK file and then you can configure different path maps for different bundlers. For Sprite Fusion, we made a new plugin here uh, and Sprite Fusion is a completely online uh, level editor, uh, and you can go ahead and build solid layers, uh, uh, which are known as collision layers, and those will work in Excalibur as well. In the editor, uh, it's very similar to what you saw with the LDDK. You just add it to the scene, and for the configuration here, it's a little more complex uh, because there's less metadata in Sprite Fusion to work with, but roughly the same. Um, and in the resources area, all you need to do again is point it at the Sprite Fusion JSON file and the path to your sprite sheet, and then you can set up entity factories to generate new entities. For tiled, uh, similar deal. You can go ahead and place tiled objects around the scene, um, uh, and they'll update automatically. In the code, uh, again, very similar, uh, and you'll notice it's very simple there. We just add it to the scene. And then in our resource, we can define a, an entity factory for constructing our player, and then also do that path map to work around different bundler expectations. We've spent a lot of time updating every single template to the latest version. We have updated all the things, and we have all of the bundlers that you could want to care about. And if there's a bundler that you care about that we don't support, let us know so we can add it. New in this release, we have a brand new shiny documentation website with the most requested feature, dark mode. Yeah, dark mode. Uh, we have completely rehashed docs. We went through and added a few no more pages to kind of help people out. We have went through and fixed a lot of my typos and my grammar. Uh, again, this is a great spot if you want to get into open source, uh, come and fix my grammar and my spelling. Um, you can go check out our API, our samples, the showcase, our community members that are building stuff. You can donate, you know, that's cool too. Uh, we also offer a premium support option. We also have a brand new configured Algolia search for those sweet, sweet searches for things like pixel art. Uh, by the way, check out the pixel art article. Very useful. Also new this release is we have a Discord. Come and join it. The community is super friendly and super helpful. We've been building lots of cool stuff together. Speaking of cool, this is a little game prototype built by Drew Conley uh, that is heavily inspired by Mega Man. It's really neat. Uh, you should go and check out the Discord for really cool stuff like this. 
Um, hopefully we get to see the full game soon. Uh, but this is really neat. Drew does a bunch of really cool game dev stuff, so you should go and check out his YouTube channel. Link is in the description. Also, go and check out uh, his Discord, uh, Game Dev Shift. Also a really awesome place. Remember Manu? He's been really busy. He also made a brand new sample called Excala Farm, which is a cozy little uh, farming inspired game uh, where you go around and cut down trees and water plants and hang out in this cozy little environment. Another really cool one is Matt. Matt with four A's uh, made a ski free clone uh, that you can use to race uh, uh, people down the mountain. I am terrible at it. If you, <laughs> you're watching me try to play right now, I'm not the best skier here. Uh, but what's really cool is you can race ghosts and you can get your high score. Uh, and I've just given up here and I'm just going to go ahead and just barrel through all the way to the end of the slope. Uh, but really cool. It's up on the showcase if you want to check it out. Really neat stuff. Mookie from the Discord has also been really busy. He's been porting his game Orbit Connect to Excalibur. And believe it or not, this is all 2D Excalibur, but using shaders with Excalibur materials. It's super wild what kind of cool stuff you can come up with. He's also been working on a thing called Wave Function Collapse. So you can see here, uh, it's auto-generating tiles and uh, terrains randomly that are plausible. Uh, it's a really interesting technique for procedural generation. Prepared to be amazed with this new entry from Discord user Tiwasu, hopefully I'm saying that right, where they use the Excalibur physics engine to make a kind of uh, physics like a ball game where you uh, have to solve a maze by rotating the maze to get the ball to fall in the right place. Very, very fun. Very cool. I've never seen anything quite like this. Really unique idea. Definitely going to be playing this a lot. Be sure to check out his website at bossweb.dev. Discord user Waylon has been working on a card game called War Hero, uh, and it's looking really, really good. Uh, it's using a multiplayer server behind the scenes called Calisius. Uh, so go check that out. Uh, let me know if it's good. Uh, but he's using a lot of uh, Excalibur actions here to move the cards around and change their scale and move them around. But it's a really cool looking game. I can't wait to be playing this. Uh, I want to see more card games like this because, dang, this is really good looking. Another really cool multiplayer game by Discord user Mamflow uh, uh, looks like an action RPG, uh, and it looks awesome. Like, it, it looks like kind of Realm of the Mad God, like, I'm gonna go, you know, fight a bunch of enemies at once. Really neat stuff. Discord user Drew P is working on a really cool thing where you build trailers dynamically for a movie and they just kind of show up on this movie theater screen so i'm just going to be really quiet uh for a second and let you listen to it it's very cool once upon a time in a land of fantasy and magic where anything is possible the sky is painted with colors of the sunset the grass is greener than the greenest in ireland the world had changed but the fight was far from over or even more than that. Yeah, that's just so cool. Discord user Mortal Life has been working on a multiplayer game uh, using tile maps, uh, using a service called Party Kit, um, if I'm not mistaken. Also something to go check out if you're looking to do a multiplayer game. It's really cool looking already. Let's talk about the roadmap to version one. We're gonna have a new website, ExcaliburJS.tv, where we'll have uh, free courses. Go ahead and sign up to be notified. Uh, we're going to have Excalibur Studio coming soon, which will be free and open source, and it'll be an editor for Excalibur games. So it'll be a low-code, no-code editor for making games. Follow us on itch at caliburngames.itch.io to be notified when that editor drops. Um, there will be at least one more version before we release V1 and maybe uh, a release candidate or two. Uh, but things that we're really interested in getting are particles, 
In this particle prototype, you can see that we can drive ridiculous numbers of particles. In here, we're getting 100,000 particles, no sweat, 60 frames per second. We're also using collision masks, very cool, giving some Elmo Rises energy. Going back to the roadmap, we also want a UI manager, and we are going to really dig into accessibility. We're going to make an ARIA Live announcer, a screen reader element uh, provider for clickable items, a color contrast shader, improvements to the imper mapper, and then any other features that are important to you, you should reach out to us so that we can make sure we include that in Excalibur's ally features. Many thanks to our new contributors, and many thanks to everyone who helped me find bugs, improve the documentation, and help me out on the Discord. Uh, thank you, Manu. Thank you, Muki. Thank you, Kamran. Thank you, Kristen. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Chad. And thank you, Hugo. You all helped out a ton. Wow. I can't believe you made it to the end. That was the longest release video I've ever made. This has been a really big one. Please go and check out the repo on github.com and give us a star, ExcaliburJS slash Excalibur. Uh, go and check out our Discord. There's a lot of fun and friendly people there willing to help you make your games and answer questions. Go check out our samples. We got a lot of them. Uh, and then go check out the getting started documentation as well. And you will get going and making games today. Awesome. Well, thanks again and bye.